Hi, everyone. Welcome to our June Hope Session. I am Heidi Parker. My pronouns are she, her. I am the Community Initiatives Manager here at Arts and Healing Initiative, and I am your Zoom host today. This program is presented as part of our free Hope Series, Healing Online for People Everywhere, which we created to support the resilience of our global community through social emotional arts. Each workshop offers a supportive space for connection, healing, and empowerment as we navigate the changes in our world. If you have previously attended a HOPE session, welcome back. If you are new, thank you for joining today. We're grateful you're all here to create, learn, and grow together as a community. Today's program is in a meeting format, so please keep yourself muted until prompted otherwise. We are recording today's session in speaker view. We do pause during any reflections and it will be shared on our YouTube channel. You are welcome to leave your cameras on as you feel comfortable as we'd love for you to actively participate. Our session today is scheduled for an hour and a half. So feel free to add questions in the chat as they arise or you can use the raise hand function. Before we begin, we would like to start by acknowledging the Tongva Nation on whose land the city of Los Angeles where we are based, rest today. We hold respect and gratitude for the Tongva people who still consider themselves the caretakers of this land. By their example, we are reminded of our responsibility to our planet and to one another. Let's take a moment in our own way to honor the indigenous communities of past and present on whose land you are joining from today. And feel free to honor the communities where you are joining from in the chat. I'd like to welcome today's instructor, Asia Moore. She is a multicultural story warrior who believes telling and sharing stories has the power to change the world. One person, one place, one program at a time. From her background as an expressive arts therapist and clinical social worker with expertise in trauma-informed care to her current doctoral studies in positive developmental psychology and evaluation, you can find Asia in the gaps, cracks, and shadows, looking for ways to uplift the voices being personally and systemically silenced. In Asia, you will find a passionate co-conspirator ready to help and to listen, a creative problem solver who sees opportunities where others see obstacles, and a practical optimist dedicated to seeing and celebrating the strengths and beauty in the communities up against the most challenging of circumstances. So welcome, Asia, and I will turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Heidi, and a warm hello to all of you. I am feeling lots of gratitude to be in community with you all. So I'm going to go ahead at this point and share screen. As Heidi mentioned, please feel free to get involved in what Every way feels most authentic to you. So I'll be checking the chat throughout for comments and there'll be plenty of opportunities to jump in. This is gonna be very back and forth um, and community oriented for us today. So give me just a second to get my slides here. Okay, can we all see the screen? Thumbs up. I see nods. Beautiful. So just in case you're just coming in, this is the session you're here for. Um, again, my name is Asia, and we're just going to jump right on into our agenda and just really orienting ourselves. What are we grappling with today? Um, and so these are sort of the four central questions we are going to be grappling with. And we're going to start from left and right. So we are going to think about all those things that are probably weighing on our mind as we hop onto this call. What's next on the to-do list? What's in between ourselves and the weekend? Calls and emails we may see get ourselves getting alerts for. So very much so meeting you where you are. And then we're going to go a bit deeper into what do we want? or perhaps even wish we could do? And finally, what do we really need? And so my goal today is sharing things that not only benefit you, but are also things you could easily do for yourself independently. You could share um, 
in whatever context with your friends, your family, the communities we may serve. So all of these things are intentionally simplistic, but I hope that today you will see they have a lot of depth you can add to them. And so that final question at the bottom isn't so much an activity as it is a prompt and an encouragement, because as we find ourselves doing writing, writing brings up a lot of writing anxiety for folks. Um, we're going to be doing list poems today, which just for my own curiosity, can I get a show of hands visually or using the raise hand function if anyone has heard or written a list poem before? Oh, awesome. Beverly, thank you. I see a raised hand. Okay, exciting. So we got some, it'll be new for some and uh, familiar for, for others, perhaps. Uh, but what's most important today is process over product. So how can we be intentional sitting down with ourselves in a way where we can do our best to set down judgment and show ourselves grace and compassion, right? That's the million dollar question amidst our busy schedule. So have I sold y'all on this agenda? You're like, yes, what are you selling, Asia? Can we jump in? All right, I see smiles. Okay, so let's jump right on in here. Okay, so the way today is going to work, we're going to do this familiar dance. Um, and it's also just peeling back the layers here. Part of my work in being trauma responsive is not surprising you. So you'll notice the rhythm of how we're working is going to be continuous. So if you find, ooh, this part's heavy and I need to come out of it, it's coming. We're not going to stay in the depth and heaviness the whole time. That's intentional. So for this first activity, what do we have to do? I am guessing you do not need a lot of time to think about all the things on your to-do list. Am I right? We can think of some off the top of our heads. I see smiles. Okay. What I want us to do, and we're going to start off on the next slide, doing a guided mindfulness exercise. But essentially, we're going to be imagining everything we have to do or that we perceive ourselves as having to do as a rock that's sitting on us, right? And the heavier the task the bigger the rock. And heavy could mean requiring more time, but heavy could also mean requiring more capacity, right? It could be, I need to send this one message, but it's emotionally charged, so I've been avoiding it. Um, or it could be the menial things that maybe we just don't enjoy doing on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? So I'm gonna invite you into your bodies in just a moment to sort of visualize your to-do list in a more embodied way. And we are going to lovingly, that's why that's written on the screen, lovingly cause a rock slide to push these rocks off of us so we can take a look at them, okay? So we're going to here, go to the next slide, start off with a guided mindfulness exercise. So if you are not already sitting comfortably um, or positioned comfortably, I invite you to do so now. Um, just checking in with yourselves. And if turning your cameras off for this portion helps you to be present with yourself, I also encourage and invite you to do that as well. Thank you so much. And however you are positioned, um, I'm going to also invite you to have what we call a soft gaze. So just sort of gently looking in front of us. If your body feels so led, I, you can also close your eyes. It's really whatever feels comfortable to you. And we're going to start off just taking a few deep breaths at your own pace. And as you find yourself taking those breaths, just notice where you may have some tension in your body. Maybe you feel it in your neck and shoulders. You can roll your head side to side if that feels like it may relieve some tension. Do you feel it in your spine? 
Maybe you find your hands or toes are tightly held together. Just allowing yourself to just notice how you feel. I'll take a moment to do that. And as you start to notice where your body is carrying maybe this tension or this weight, I want you to imagine the things on your to-do list as these sort of rocks where you felt that tension in your body. And just start to notice and perhaps name them. Maybe they're coming through your thoughts like clouds. Oh, I have this I need to do. Can't forget to do this. I'm waiting to hear back from someone. And I just imagine those thoughts becoming rocks you can see. What color are they? What shape and texture do they have? How does it feel to hold them? We're going to take a moment to do that now. And as you start to sort of name these things on your to-do list, maybe you're feeling the weight get a little heavier. Maybe you're just coming to notice you've been holding this weight maybe all day, this whole week for a while. So I'm now going to invite you to set those rocks down. And this can be as slow as one at a time. Or it can be a true rock slide where we're just casting them off of ourselves and saying, enough, I'm setting them down for this moment. Whatever way feels intuitive to you, I invite you to listen and go ahead and do so. Again, checking in with your breath, reminding yourself you are grounded, and just allowing these rocks, these things and tasks and responsibilities to slide off of you for a little bit. Noticing any changes in your body as you do so. Taking a few more deep breaths, whatever feels good to you. And when and how you are ready, I invite you to return into this space. Again, with grace, easing back in, if that's turning on your camera, if that's keeping it off, whatever feels best for you, just return into the room and we'll give you a moment to do so as well. Welcome. So just keeping in mind, however you're feeling in this particular moment, hold on to that because we're going to circle back to it. But after doing that, after visualizing those rocks, we are now going to write our first list poem and they are exactly what they sound like. It is just a list. So the same way that you could write down a grocery store shopping list, right? I need eggs. The kids have already gone through the juice. Maybe that's just my house. Um, <laughs> whatever it is, uh, you would just write it down. So I've included some phrases on screen. Some of us are like, oh, I need a start. So you could start with as simple as a phrase is, I have to blank and just list those rocks, those things you have to do. 
you might be a little bit more like goal oriented, like, no, I'm thinking about the weekend. So in order to get to the other side, I need to blink. Okay. The last one I've included as a guide is I'll be able to rest when isn't that a thought? So those are ideas. You can make your own sort of prompt. And I'm going to give you about five to seven minutes here to just write it down. And if anyone has questions, comments, or concerns, I am here and I will be doing the same. So if you notice me looking down, it's because I'm writing my own list poem too. Okay. Any questions? All right. Happy writing. Just checking in. We're going to do another two to three minutes here. And if you find that your list feels complete, I invite you to use this time to read it back uh, and just notice any thoughts or feelings or felt sensations you notice receiving what you shared with yourself. Okay, so another two to three minutes.
All right, I'm going to invite you to find a natural pause, acknowledging for some of you, this may feel incomplete. Uh, you may find yourself wanting more time. Just notice those feelings and tuck them away. For some of you, maybe this was something you completed quickly. Acknowledge how that feels to move at that pace. Okay, and if you're still writing, again, I encourage you to wrap up, but that's okay. We are going to move on, and I want to give you some time to check in. And for some of us, we may be checking in on one of these things. We may feel it more so in our bodies. Uh, for others, it may be happening across multiple spaces in our minds, hearts, or spirits. So I want to open the floor and start with the sort of guided mindfulness exercise that we did. So if you think back to visualizing where you felt tension or weight in your body and then visualizing the rocks, I just want to check in. How was that experience for you? So I invite folks to uh, unmute and jump in. You can raise your hand um, or throw things in the chat, whatever feels most authentic to where you are in this moment. See folks typing. Okay, while we're giving folks some time to write, for those that are on camera, maybe we can do show of hands here. Who found the guided visualization to be challenging in some form? Any show of hands? I'll raise mine for this. Okay, I'm just scrolling through the gallery here. Okay, you can put your hands down. Who found it to be pretty accessible and intuitive? You could really see things readily, show of hands. Okay, I see your hands. Thank you, thank you. And I invite you all to follow along in the chat. I wanted to shake off the rocks, but some clung on. I'm going to give snaps to that. If you guys see me uh, snapping or you may hear me say ashe, that just means I am receiving that and resonating with it. So ashe to that. Didn't realize things that were causing a bother. Um, maybe realizing it's been a while since you've checked in. Some rocks being too heavy to shake off. And all of these, I thank you so much for all sharing noticing them for one, and then trying to notice them without judgment, right? What if there was rocks we couldn't set down? Or what if we set them down and we wanted to do it calmly and, and lovingly, and instead it really was like a rock slide where it was going everywhere. We just saw debris, right? How do we still show grace and compassion to those weights? Thank you, Ping. Noticing certain imagery around the rocks, right? So you could do a whole session with a client, with a community, with yourself, with loved ones, where you draw what those rocks look like, where you could emote and somatically, you know, using dance and, and theater, honor what those rocks feel like um, for you to hold and for them just to exist in your mind's eye. So there's a lot you could do here with different modalities of expression, but today we chose writing. So I want to shift here and check in. How was it then transitioning from that felt and sort of guided thought experience into putting it on a list poem? What was that process like? And again, I invite folks to unmute and share in the chat. All right, following along here in the chat, thank you again for all the thoughtful, thoughtful commentary here. Wanting to shake, I felt that too. Did anyone else feel like their body was like 
buzzing and like needed to move and get like energy out. That was happening for me too. Thank you for lifting that up. So much to do, yet the list wasn't too long. That makes a lot of sense. A lot of sense. Did anyone notice any particular uh, sensations as they had to put it on, on paper or on your phone or wherever you were writing? Did you notice any changes from how you felt when you were simply visualizing into doing something? I'm curious. That one, the embodied element that comes through when we just allow ourselves to notice, right? When we're in this reactionary space, we can just feel the weight. And maybe we miss out on distinguishing that the weight has different meaning, that the weight has different texture, that we have options for what to hold or set down. And maybe we don't, right? There's nuance there. And so that's really the takeaway here that with a simple list, right, we can use that to just notice where we are, right? It doesn't have to be about, I got an A, gold star Asia, I set down all my rocks, I'll never feel stressed again, right? Like, is that even realistic with, the, you know, the lives that we lead? But how can we practice in this small way, showing ourselves love for the things that maybe we couldn't let go? Are the things that were jagged and maybe they would hurt our hands to hold, right? And how do we just thank our bodies for holding that weight? Um, I saw a great question in the chat. What's the difference between a list and a list poem? And there are some folks who are far more into the technical definitions of things that would give you a clear cut definition. In my indigenous understanding, any list can be a list poem. Um, it's the intention, I think, behind it. I think when I personally am writing my grocery list, for example, I don't know that I'm thinking intentionally about what eggs mean to me and my household. Maybe I could be. Um, but I think when you add the embodied piece of what do I need to say? Um, what do I need to witness? How can I show up for myself? It has this magic to turn a simple list into a poem that may have a bit more to show you. So that hopefully is a satisfying answer, but I think it's best to show you. So let's continue throughout today and maybe y'all can tell me what's the difference. Uh, I want to catch up here in the chat because there's some great conversations going on. Noticing differences in the body. I'm glad we could bring our attention to that. I'll be able to rest when is a tricky prompt. So thank you for sharing. It would be huge for a lot of us. Like when would time stop? In my own list poem, I described it as like traversing the desert. Um, and it's a horizon that seems to get further every day, right? So very much so resonating with that. Um, okay, catching up here how our breath can be connected to this and then noticing some of the same things. Like maybe there is emotions that have to be let go of along the way and not just tasks, right? So these are all wonderful insights and you guys all did it so quickly. So if there were any writers in here, any writing anxiety, look how quickly you were able to engage with that. So hold on to that. We're going to go a bit deeper here. Uh, but again, if you feel like there's more here, I really encourage you to circle back to this um, in your own time, especially the ideas adding in other ways of like movement, of visualizing, of creating, painting, sculpting um, with different things. I You can do a lot with this. But for the sake of today, giving you a little bit of everything, we are going to move on uh, to our next activity here. Okay, so before we were meeting ourselves where we were, we were just taking like a special x-ray vision that could see the invisible weight we're carrying. We can picture it like that. So in this task, imagining whatever we could set down that we did. So we're feeling a little lighter. We have a little bit more awareness of where we are. In this exercise, we are going to visualize our visualize literally getting away, running away for this sake of today, we're going to picture ourselves going into the woods, right? 
So much so that we arrive in the middle of this wooded scenery where our inner child lives and has full reign over what we do. And in this space, which I'm calling here the forest of our minds, this is a special place that centers our joy. It centers play, rest, and any and everything that feels good. Okay? So I'm going to give you a second to just cognitively sit with how that feels to receive. And then we're going to do the same thing we did before. A guided visualization exercise and then time to process with writing. So just imagine like wrapping your minds around that. Hey, are we ready? Are we ready to journey together? You didn't know we were time traveling. We were realm travelers on this Wednesday uh, afternoon, but let's let's see. And again, at any point, I want you to honor what feels right for you. If you find that this is activating things for you and you're like, I can't run away from the everyday, that is stressing me out, then sit there. Let, allow your inner child to meet you you could visualize your inner child showing up in your office, in your house, knocking with a toy box of things to say, hey, it's time to play, right? They can meet you wherever you are. If you can push and it feels accessible, then I invite you to follow along with the guided meditation I'll be leading us through. So once again, check in with yourself. Are you positioned comfortably? I invite you to turn off your cameras. If that allows you to focus a bit more, if you're comfortable, keep them on. Now in this one, since we're talking about movement, right? We're gonna be imagining moving to a new scenery. It's important that we feel grounded. So to do this, I like to really feel my feet planted. Um, I'm intentionally barefoot right now. So if you would like to do that, I will give you time to do so, so that you can really feel the texture um, of what's beneath you. And if you have shoes and socks on, feel that texture. But you really want to bring your body's awareness that you are supported. Okay. Let's so give you a moment. Take a few normal breaths, just doing another body scan, noticing how you're feeling. Any changes since the start of this session to now? Just filing them away as little notes. And as you ease into your body, I invite you to, again, do a soft gaze, looking down, closing your eyes. That feels safe. And as you ease into this moment, Imagine hearing all the voices that occupy your everyday life. That could be the sounds of traffic that you deal with in your commute or that are outside your homes, chatter if you work in an office space, the noises of loved ones who live with you. the sound of television or other devices, even the hum of an AC, as a lot of us are getting heat this week, all the noises that surround you. And notice how loud the volume is, how your body is responding to noticing that volume. If there's any voices or sounds that are louder than others, just take note. We'll take a moment there. Now, imagine yourself leaving those sounds behind 
leaving those voices behind and propelling towards a vast forest. Maybe you notice yourself taking off shoes and running barefoot and filling the soil in between your toes. Maybe you're flying and you can smell the crisp, fresh air. And you can hear, instead of the busy noise, you hear a babbling brook, the chirping of birds. Silence. Whatever a comfortable quiet looks like for you, imagine finding that around these trees. Imagine this space where your breath is light and easy and comfortable. You have nothing to do, nowhere to go, no responsibility, but to just be in this moment. And as you feel your body react to being in this space, imagine your inner child arriving in this forest with you. Picture what age shows up for you. Are they a toddler? Are they school aged? Are they an adolescent? And they get to decide what brings you joy, what you're gonna do in the forest. So ask yourself, what would you do with this inner child? Do they want to dance and for you to move your body? Mimicking the trees swaying side to side. Do they want to nap and lay down on the soft grass, trusting that they are safe to close their eyes for a little while? Do they want to paint, get their hands dirty, making images and art out of mud and crushed flowers? Do they want to sing, echoing the sounds of those birds you heard chirping? But imagine yourself following the lead of your inner child and playing with them. See yourself doing those activities, whatever comes to your mind. And notice how your body feels. The sounds you might hear as you play. And just focus on whatever feels good in that moment. Now take a few deep breaths, holding on to those feelings. When you're ready, allow yourself to say goodbye or see you later to your inner child. Perhaps you want to make an agreement to meet each other soon to play again. Whatever you need to feel closure. And I'll give you a moment to do so. And when you're ready, I invite you to return into this space.
And if folks want to turn their cameras back on or put a reaction emoji on as a way of letting me know that you are back with us, then we can process. Thank you. Welcome back from the woods. So before we go into any writing aspect here, I want to check in with everyone. We went we went far in more ways than one. So what was that experience like for you? And I'm going to encourage us to start with how it felt somatically before we get to our thoughts. So what did you notice in your body as I was sort of walking you through noticing the sounds of everyday life with the transition of going away? What did that feel like in your body? I see a few tears. Yeah. Inner children definitely have a way, I think, of bringing us into our bodies as a common, common experience. So I thank y'all for your bravery in sharing that with us. And I love the reactions here in the chat. Joy and fun, rainbows and caterpillars. Anyone notice any change? Because we started off noticing weight, right? And like tension. Did anybody notice any sensations of that, whether they were the same or different as they were visualizing? Okay, feelings of relaxation, lightness. Wonderful. Now let's get into assigning some feelings that came up or maybe some thoughts that came up. How was that for you? What were you noticing was coming up for you? Buoyancy, carrying rocks into the forest. So bringing things with you. Feeling weightlessness with flying. These are all such rich insights. Thank you all for sharing. I want to make space if anyone wants to unmute as well and share. Um, all of y'all's share outs, you hear this theme of resilience, right? The, the mind's ability to find a way. It didn't bring you out of the visualization, right? For some of you, you couldn't leave the rocks, so you brought them with you you were still able to move and get to the woods or a tree emerged as an anchor maybe to help hold some of the weight to take it off your shoulders. So like children and like play, it's always so powerful to witness how when we enter the, the imagination that comes before writing, before we're worried about, you know, form and process product and does it sound good? And do I share it? A lot of the things we think of with writing and poetry in particular, first is imagination, which has a lot of wiggle room that perhaps we find ourselves forgetting as we're so busy and feeling stuck. So I just want to lift up how much resilience and wisdom y'all are bringing in this space that your inner children seem to have reminded you of. Um, does anyone want to share any fun things their inner child wanted to do? Any activities that they saw themselves doing of the texture uh, that you you were able to experience. This is also making me think again. Other art modalities that you could bring in would be like finding different fabrics or textures to sort of like collage and feel to bring you back to those images that you experience. Because I know earlier we were thinking, some of us were talking about jagged rocks, like rough textures. And then for you, you know, the coziness of being inside a cabin, that confinement amidst the woods and familiar flavors and scents, um, so much that you all could do there. So thank you uh, for sharing. I'm catching up here in the chat. 
uh, if you all want to follow along. Um, being barefoot um, could be uncomfortable, could be freeing. Again, want to lift up that y'all are making the space for both, right? I'm noticing that in the, the chat here, folks have different connotations of what the forest means, right? Whether it's a cabin, I saw someone mention swimming and connecting more with water. And you were able to confront this weight doesn't feel exactly right or authentic to me. And so quickly you were able to pivot and revisualize what you knew you needed, right? And in order to do that, you had to give yourself grace and compassion to listen. And that's what this style of mindfulness and the list poem activity is meant to help us tap into. So I'm going to give you just five minutes here. And I recognize that's not a lot of time, but we're just scratching the surface. That's okay. To write another list poem about your experience. So again, it could be listing all the things you felt, all the things you would do in a day in this special place with your inner child. I've also included some phrases to get you started if, if you're feeling like, where do I want to go? So one of my favorites is, if I were free, I would. Because um, free can mean a lot of different things, as we know. I also included happiness is when. And then last but not least, if my inner child had their way, I would. And I also invite you as you're writing this list to invite some of that youthful energy into how you write, right? So maybe we were more bulleted in the first one of, I need to get emails done. I need to complete this assignment. I need to grade papers. So if you want to have like the onomatopoeias of, I want to feel free and gooey like slime, right? Invite that energy you experience into the things you list and how you describe them. Think of how little you uh, would be helping you fill out this list, if that makes sense, okay? So we'll do five minutes. I'll check in with you at noon to see how it's going. And I'm going to do the same over here.
thank you for those in the chat who have to step away. Thank you for your time. And for those of us who are still in the session, I invite you to find a natural pause. Again, honoring any feelings that come up as we transition. Catching up in the chat here. It's interesting when our inner uh, child and our children start to have demands upon us. Um, there may be a quite a long list poem that they have of things they've been wanting to tell us um, or asking of us to give back to ourselves. So thank you for raising that as well. And again here, I'll move on here to the next slide. I just want to give you space to check in with how that was for you. So feel free, whether it's body, mind, heart, spirit, a combination or something else uh, to put in the chat and also to unmute yourself so we can hold the weight of your spoken word as well, if you feel so led. I'm curious, was this one different in any way than the first list poem? Did it feel similar? Did it feel different? In what ways? I'll give folks a sec to write in the chat. Thank you, Ping. Noticing differences about what encouraged and was maybe more generative um, and helping to maybe have some clarity. Giving compassion to our inner, inner child, I think is also a big, big theme. Thank you for your vulnerability in sharing. Uh, someone mentioned earlier, like having tears come to mind. I know that's a common thing with me, even when I think I'm doing a lighthearted uh, inner child check-in, there's just so much emotion. I find myself crying often with her um, and often feeling some judgment about how long it's been since I've listened to her. So if that's been part of your experience today, I am in community with you and sending you grace and holding those feelings too. Joy, thank you so much for sharing some of the words and, and lists you came up with. I want to give everyone a second to read what Joy has offered us. Wow, I feel like I'm I'm there with you, Joy. Thank you so much for sharing that piece of yourself with all of us. This poem felt free, rhythmic, flowing, and silly. Wow, you could write a list poem of what makes me feel free, what makes me feel rhythmic, what makes me feel flowing and silly. In the spirit of that, I want to add a new layer. We're going a little bit deeper. And this is an invitation. It is not an assignment. You can always, always, I want you to follow what your body is guiding you to do. But if you feel like sharing, I invite you to share a single line from this list poem into the chat that you would be comfortable letting others see and hold with you and having me read aloud because I think there's also power in having others witness your truth. And list poems are a safe way to do that. So I'm gonna give everyone a minute here. 
if they feel so called to share a line of what they came up with, and then I will tie it together and read it aloud. Since Joy gave us such a beautiful start, thank you. All right. As folks are still putting their offerings into the chat, I am going to reflect back your offerings and share them. So whether you shared or decided not to, I want you to check in with your body as I receive it. I'm just mirroring what you shared and giving it back. Okay. So notice what it's like to hear it and be on the receiving end. Okay. So I'm going to start if you want to follow along in the chat. Uh, with Ping's offering. Happiness is when I have an unstructured day. No appointments, time for water and food when needed. I want to drink out of pretty leaf cups filled with dew drops. Happiness is when I am recognized for who I am. Happiness is when I get home and Sage, my dog, jumps into my arms. If I were free, I would have a dance party in the parking lot. Squish my fingers and toes in the mud. Happiness is when I am not compressed, when I am on an adventure and going slowly. Little Lisa on her bike, pedaling away into the countryside the road lined with cornfields on both sides, going. Here, Chrissy feels happy and safe. Dancing all day. My inner child wants to immerse herself in the flowers, their touch and scent, to play and plant seeds to see what grows. Thank you. How was that to hear back? It's a little different, right? It adds a new a new experience. So I'm curious. And you guys can just put one or two words in the chat quickly here, how that was for you to receive. Beautiful. I agree. I know I'm trying to keep composed and hold the space, but on the inside, I'm like, yes right? Like I'm the enthusiastic co-conspirator. I'm excited for you all. You did. You did all make a glorious poem. And that's part of what I wanted to tease earlier with the question of what, how does it go from a list to like a list poem, right? You all took totally different prompts in your own individual experiences you weren't worried about connecting sentences or stanzas or rhyming or rhythm or writing experience. The only thing you had in common was that you were having an authentic moment with yourself. And look what happens when we invite that in. You get to look at something, a piece of yourself, alongside others doing the same thing, right? And there's inherent community in that. So I love doing this with my students. Um, maybe it isn't something I would do in the very first session when folks are just getting to know each other, but it does work fairly early on where folks are like, damn, you nailed that. Like, that's so me. That sounds so great. Um, and it's a safe way to connect um, versus if I would have said, okay, everyone, we're going to write a group poem together. Then there's expectation maybe of like, is it going to fit? And how does, how do I merge with someone else versus just saying, nope, everybody just show up as yourself and let's see how pretty that mosaic is and how powerful it can be when we're ourselves. Is that resonating with anybody? Anybody receiving that? 
I found myself in each of your poems. I feel like that's the mic drop of the session. Like we're okay, cool. Everyone enjoy the rest. You have 20 minutes back to your day. Um, yes, we can find ourselves in one another in poetry. I feel like you summed up my career in one page. I'm putting that in my dissertation to my a committee saying, I don't need to write anymore. They nailed it. <laughs> to wrap up our time, I thank you all for your, your sharing here. I want to give you time to think about this notion of seeds. So every time I do a session, um, whether it's one-on-one -on -one with a client, if it's with a group, a classroom, no matter what hat I have on, I always ask this question of what seeds have you collected today? And it's a time to just think of starting off what resonated with you and what seeds would you like to plant or water? And I'm going to give you a moment to do that. So this is my way of acknowledging that a lot, this is your wisdom, right? I just maybe had a small role in giving you a shovel and inviting you to dig and find the seeds of your own wisdom. But you now have the choice on what to do with those seeds. So maybe for some of you, you still are looking down at them, right? These are new discoveries. They're like gemstones someone mentioned earlier, right? Like these could be precious nuggets that we just want to hold on to and learn more about. For some of you, you guys lifted up things that you already knew, you had awareness of. And now maybe you're feeling like, what do I do with it, right? Maybe you want to help it take root to make changes in the way you think or plan your day. And for others of you, you may, you shared, this is work I've already been doing. So maybe today was about watering it and revisiting a goal, something you already knew about yourself. So in the sort of gold frame I've put on the screen, this final opportunity to write a list poem is essentially asking you what seeds of who you are, of your life, where you want to be, however you want to complete that sentence, what needs tending to, right? All living things are a part of an ecosystem, right? A garden. So what do we need to do to tend to our internal garden? You could revisit your first list poem about what needs to get done. You could revisit the poem with your inner child. What do you wish? What is little you need to be done? Maybe you're writing a new list that's combining those two things. Maybe it's something totally different. After doing all these exercises, Asia, I realize what I think I need to do and what I actually need to do are two very different things, right? All We have room for all of those experiences. So I'm gonna give you five minutes again to identify what you need all versions of you okay for the sake of time I'm just going to read this prompt because I want us to have time to share but I invite you and Heidi will have these slides available after um, to revisit this prompt so imagine yourself sort of sitting down and again, could be with your inner child, could be amongst your rocks, your responsibilities, but really sitting down and make doing like a needs assessment with yourself. What do I need? And for those of you who have been using some of these prompts, I've included a few more. At the end of the day, what matters is, or to take care of myself and all that I treasure, I need to blank. And this is a new one I've added on last but not least. My best self is asking me to what? So feel free to use those offerings of my own at your discretion. And we will check back around 12, 18, 12, 19 um, to see how it went. Okay, so just try and get started and I'll be here doing the same. Thank you, Heidi.
Thank you, everyone, for your offerings in the chat. We're going to do about another minute here. So if you're done, I invite you to, again, witness yourself and what you shared and go ahead and wrap up or find a natural pause. And I'm going to do the same and then we'll check back in with each other. So one more minute. Okay, I'm going to invite everyone to come back together one last time. And I love that we have organically began this tradition of sharing our offerings. Uh, so I'm going to give everyone a minute or two to, in their own time and pace, read the offerings in the chat that have been shared with us as I do the same. Mm. Thank you, everyone. Give folks a few seconds to finish. And if anyone else would like to share, there's always space for that here uh, to do so. So as we wrap up in our, in our final 10 minutes here, we have a choice. Um, and I leave it to you, um, trusting that you are experts that know what you need and what is most resonant. So we can do one of two things. We can use these guiding questions to sort of wrap up what our takeaways are to allow ourselves to re-enter our day. Uh, we also have additional time to share. If any folks want to read aloud um, and unmute, if they want to, we can do what we did before where um, folks share a few lines and I can sort of weave them together, sharing that aloud. So what feels most resonant? Should we take a simple vote? Is that the easiest way here? Okay, I see more folks sharing. Do we wanna do another group poem to read out loud what folks are sharing? Can I get... Thumbs up if that sounds good. Yes, I see nods, hands up. Okay. All right. And you know what I will do with y'all, I do with my students. I will share what I wrote. I never ask for vulnerability. I am not willing to give and I usually try to go a bit further. So I will tie all these wonderful offerings together uh, for your enjoyment. If anyone else wants to share as I'm starting at the top, uh, you have time and space to do so. And then I will share what I came up with, okay? So sit back and enjoy receiving, giving yourself the time to receive, okay? So let me scroll here. My best self is asking me to love myself without judgment. And that is hard to do, but it's worth it. At the end of the day, what matters is that I make it home into my bed and get blessed with waking up the next day for an opportunity to do better because my best self is asking me to. 
to take care of myself and all that I treasure. I need to float for a while and not feel guilty about doing it. My best self is asking me to trust myself, have more fun, listen to the universe and my inner child more. Some seeds must rest in the deep, dark soil, feeling the tears of earth. To take care of all that I treasure, I must also treasure myself. My best self wants to remember the poppies that planted themselves this year. To be patient, trust, grow, not hold back, explore, create. My best self is asking me to clean off the schmutz, purify myself, create more hours to use in each day of sunlight, give up my community work, eat less ice cream, get healthy. My best self asks Christine to create the conditions for thriving, contribution, play, joy, and safety, to commit to it. My best self is asking me to clear away the noise and spend quiet time reflecting. My best self is asking me to sing every morning, move my body all day long, make time to grow herbs and flowers, to spend time in nature, to read, rest. Thank you all uh, for that. And I will share, I don't know that mine is complete, but as we've been practicing, that is okay. Um, so here's what I came up with. And this was my third one that I was doing, this final one. So I also used my best self. My best self has a lot of demands. She requires space. And while she bends like the rivers and tree spines she calls mother and ancestor, she will not be compacted. She is flexibly, rigidly, stubbornly herself. She insists on authenticity, absolutely allergic to anything and anyone that makes transactions out of falsehoods and expectations. She is the bravest parts of myself that appear in moments of crisis, but wish to be free in the moments of quiet and calm. My best self makes all the demands that are really just needs I swallow for the platitudes of this world. She is my CPR, forcing me to breathe and expand as I was designed to, and when I allow her to be. A vast, fluid, indescribable mess and symphony of all that I am. I am her, and she is me. Chaotically, assuredly, wonderfully me. Ashe, thank you all. Uh, we have a few minutes here. Um, so I'm going to exit. Um, but before I do so, um, I want to thank you all for journeying with yourself and with us today. I send blessings upon you, whether that journey takes you forward upward, inward, all the directions that come doing this work for ourselves and those we love. Um, and I just want to wrap up with the last few minutes if folks have questions or comments uh, with gratitude. Um, thank you so much. Hi, Asia. Hey, good to see you. It's good to see you. It's good to learn from you today and just really so healing to engage in these exercises. Um, I just want to thank you so much for being such an incredible role model for this work and for uh, giving us this healing experience today. It was really just elegant and powerful. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Asia. And I want to thank everyone else for joining us today and just echoing um, Ping's comments. 
And we would like to extend our appreciation also to our donors and those um, who support us, um, as well as the LA Department of Arts and Culture for their support of this series. And please be on the lookout for a follow-up email that includes a brief survey about your experience today. And that survey link is also in the chat box. And that feedback really helps ensure we continue to best serve all of you and our HOPE community. And um, we do have a few upcoming HOPE series sessions, as well as some of our trainings. Um, so those are listed here. And if you know anyone that is interested in our C certificate program, and um, that um, is starting in July, and we do have some last minute spots available. So happy uh, to answer any questions about that. It will be in your email as well. And feel free to um, drop any questions for Asia um, as we're wrapping up and um, appreciate all of you. Have a wonderful rest of your week.